think peacemaking is first and foremost a spiritual discipline so that one comes to peacemaking as a spiritual practice. And often the spiritual dimension is missed uh, in talking about peacemaking. But I don't think you could ever be a peacemaker unless you have really grasped the significance of the peace of God working within your own life and then worked out from that basis towards others. Secondly, I want to say that peacemaking is very much active. It's about making peace. It's not about keeping the peace. It's not just remaining in a position of um, passivity. Um, it's an active process. It's, it's loving confrontation. Uh, so often it's easy to forget uh, or to let things ride uh, and then animosities build up and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, uh, why I say it's a spiritual discipline is because you uh, in, inhabit the sense of uh, not letting things uh, build up between you so that if there are issues you um, make it a practice to um, go out of your way to put things right. Um, first and foremost, uh, Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Um, when we talk about being a, a, a child of God, a son or a daughter of God, does peacemaking sort of come first and foremost to our mind? Often not. It's not the thing we talk about in our church communities and so on and so forth. But Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, it's the peacemakers who are called children of God. Peacemaking is what should characterise us as members of God's family. So when we start to, to grasp that, it becomes a, it becomes a passion. If it's the defining characteristic of who I am as a child of God. Um, that excites me. Well, when you read the letters in the New Testament, um, how do they, nearly all of them start, um, or certainly within the salutation, uh, take Paul's letters, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, called by God, etc., etc., and then grace and peace to you. Uh, we hear a lot about grace, um, and rightly so, um, but it's not ever just grace, ever. It's grace and peace. And peace, therefore, is at the heart of what certainly Paul and the other New Testament letter writers are about in addressing communities where Clement uh, writing to the Church of Rome says therefore let us unite with those who devoutedly practice peace and not with those who hypocritically wish for peace. I think that's a fantastic little sentence um, really um, engaging with those who devoutly practice peace and not just those who hypocritically wish for peace. We all wish for peace if you ask anyone, would they prefer to be, live in a world of peace or conflict? Of course we wish for peace. But we're encouraged by Clement to engage, actively engage with those who devoutly, passionately practice peace. The turning point for me in terms of specifically uh, about peacemaking and Christian involvement in it came um, when I was leading a course called Bridgehead um, in the church that I was involved in back then in, in Bristol. Um, which ran for four years from 1986 to 1990. And we had a number of different modules, if you like. And one of those was on uh, contemporary Christian ethics. And uh, I invited uh, a guy called Noel Mools um, to take the session on uh, war and peace. Now, up to that point, if you pressed me, I would probably have said, uh, I would have probably been a just war um, person. Uh, I, I, you know, I didn't like war, but I thought war was um, an appropriate response uh, in certain uh, situations. Noel came to talk about uh, just war and then uh, about the Christian vision of peace. And it just blew me away uh, as he articulated the biblical vision of shalom and uh, really passionately um, spelt out um, what I came to realise was an Anabaptist perspective on peacemaking and peace. Uh, and that uh, resulted, it's a long story, but to cut it short, uh, in me becoming involved from its, found, from its founding with the Anabaptist Network in 1992. And to date, today I'm a member of a small uh, church that um, 
self-consciously calls itself, perhaps grandiosely for a small church, Bristol Peace Church. But we deliberately put peace in the heart of our um, uh, the name of the church because all of us are uh, passionately committed to this um, costly peacemaking process. The first thing, it, the first thing is that peacemaking is not easy. Um, I think the it's, it's it's great to just talk about it, but the practice of peacemaking is not easy. I'm someone who hates conflict, uh, and my means of dealing it, my default position in dealing with conflict is to not engage. Um, so for me personally, it's a very costly thing to actually. Um, go out of my way to uh, to deal with issues um, with, with other people rather than just retreat and brush it under the carpet, for which then resentment builds up and everything else that goes goes with it. So peacemaking is not easy. And that's why I say it's, a, it's very much a spiritual discipline. It's not something that you can just switch on. It's something that you have to, um, you have to practice. I'm going to talk a bit about big picture again because of my own background as uh, as a South African, and for me the most life changing, transforming um, example of peacemaking in its in process um, is what happened in the post apartheid era, uh, and many people thought that uh, apartheid would could only end with revolutionary um, the revolutionary overthrow of the government and violence uh, ensuing. But for me personally, again, going back to South Africa, um, the, the key thing for me was what happened after the, um, the apartheid did fall, with Mandela released from, from prison. Uh, and Mandela could have initiated a whole a program of reprisals against the apartheid government. But instead, he and uh, and I think Desmond Tutu was really significant in this, initiated this whole Truth and Reconciliation Commission. First thing I would say is actually, um, bearing in mind that I've talked about it as a spiritual discipline, is learn to renounce covetousness. You may think, what on earth has that got to do with peacemaking? You've got something. Uh, I haven't got it. Um, we can't both have it um, because it, the, the resource is scarce. So if you've got it and I haven't got it and I want it, I'll kill you to get it. But it goes back to Joe. James understood this well. James uh, says, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you desire stuff uh, and for that reason you end up mur murdering. I mean, he puts it as strongly as that. Um, so violence is inherently, I think, rooted in in covetousness so do not covet <laughs> um it may be a strange response but i i think that's really really important uh the second uh, and related to that is to is is really to recognize your own violence um and uh, again that's why i say it's a spiritual discipline because we are violent people our initial response is often just to hit out or to or to respond angrily, or so on. And in recognising and owning your own violence, you can then do that inner work, um, which um, means uh, confronting it in yourself and working it through. And then I would say, find others and together, because you can never do this just on your own. It's not, a, it's not something that's just an individual thing. It's very much a corporate thing, a community thing. Is, to, is find others uh, and read together, read um, stories of um, how non-violence has really, uh, and active peacemaking has really transformed situations um, in local communities right through to the, to the national level. If you want to, uh, uh, get involved in local initiatives um, where you can get appropriate training, um, in conflict resolution, as an example, uh, I have a number of friends who are actively engaged in conflict uh, resolution activities, or in um, prison work, uh, again, um, working on restorative uh, justice 
um, which on the grand scale, of course, was what the Truth and uh, Reconciliation Commission was all about, rather than um, the classic model of retribution as the model of justice. Um, and then finally, again, linked back to, to the spiritual discipline thing, um, spend time prayerfully reading the scriptures um, and, and um, really getting hold of this biblical vision of shalom in all its fullness. Grace and peace.